You see, to date, our building strategies all center on these borders that were drawn for us and not by us. You know, the Europeans are so quick to tell us that we can't bundle ourselves into a single block, but they've done it. I'm sorry, can, can we just pause, just one moment, pause the time. Who designed this nonsense? Hello everybody, welcome once again to AfriPost. I believe wherever you're watching us from, you're doing great. Now the question of Africa's integration and growth of African countries is something that has been called for by many Pan-Africanists. People like Julius Malema, people like PLO Lumumba, people like Dr. Rikana Chiombori Kwao, and many others have really called for the integration of African economies to work towards benefiting the African people. But one thing has been identified as the major hindrance for Africa's unity. And this is the partitions, the borders that we have in different countries. I want us to listen to one scholar and also entrepreneur and author, who is the South African Vushi Thambekwayo. He was invited to speak to Nigerians. And this was a very, very good speech that he made. I want us to listen to this speech and then let's talk about it after listening to it. Let's watch. You see, to date, our building strategies all center on these borders that were drawn for us and not by us. And so it becomes the question of, is your nation thriving versus mine? I had this conversation with a friend of mine who also works in capital markets like me in South Africa. I said, I'm really confused by this feud we have with Nigeria. I genuinely don't understand it. Why do we constantly migrate to the global north and South Africa tries to posture against Nigeria and Nigeria against South Africans? Who, what's the game here? What's the gambit? Whom is it that we're trying to please and against whom are we trying to please them? Because each time we find our leaders playing that game, the question perhaps we should ask is who is the master you're trying to please? In this moment and in this season, I think as a generation, we are called to truly understand what it's going to take, one and all, to work with each other, but to build with each other. And so the question for this moment, for each and every single one of us, is will we be the courageous men and women who recognize the season we are in. I'm not sure how many of us have traveled to my country of South Africa. Any of you here? Hands up. When you do, and I hope for all of you that you do, which, by the way, side note, a conversation we must have, and uh, Brother Pojo, I don't know how we do this. We need to convene the leaders of this continent to talk about this visa story. This is a disaster. And, and let me just say the following. Let me just say the following. I, 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 can't, I struggle to understand why I can land in Paris, get on a train, and end up in Brussels. But if I want to move from Joburg to Khaboroni, I must produce a passport. Who's the genius that came up with the scheme? You know, the Europeans are so quick to tell us that we can't bundle ourselves into a single block, but they've done it. When you publish this, you must just leave that part out because, <laughs> because I'm busy raising money from them. You know, I don't know. <laughs> They're going to say, he's too radical. <laughs> and so, even in my own native land of South Africa, the work as South Africans we must do is to conscientize each other about the continent. In my mind, and I was listening to your comments, ma'am, about the youth service, I'm, I'm seized to understand and failing to understand why we are not deliberately sending young people into other parts of the continent. Experience the culture. Live with the people. <laughs> to come here, to be here in this beautiful country, I had to go through Ethiopia. From Ethiopia, I was in Zambia. So, so I went South Africa, Zambia, Ethiopia, Nigeria. Between now and December, I'm going to be in about eight different African countries. In that same time, it's going to be easier for me to do five different countries in Europe than it will be to do two different countries in Africa. Less layovers, less time. I'm sorry, can, can we just pause? Just one moment, pause the time. Who designed this nonsense? 
Who wrote the script? I have a theory. And here is my theory. You only lock the vault where there is money. And so maybe there's a reason you've been kept out of that neighboring country. Maybe there's a reason you've been kept out of that neighboring region. Maybe there's a reason you can't travel to that other place. Because if you were to, there is something you might do that would help us build what we all know we are capable of. So first, keep them away from each other. Second, convince them that they're enemies with each other. And third, convince them that the other one is better than the other one. And before you're done, they will hate each other so much you don't even need to pass policy or law. And in the middle of all of this, here we sit as young people, fruitfully connected by the H -H HTTPS, and we're more worried about what's trending and commenting on it, rather than how do we meaningfully build with each other and do business. I came to tell you here today that I'm only interested in meaningfully building and doing business. I'm only interested in understanding how do we take the platform and put it in Johannesburg or put it in Cape Town. And how do we have not just this conversation here, but that conversation there? Because until and when Africa truly is of a single mind, it will continue to be the fodder and the meal for the rest of the global average. When I was prepping for this, uh, Pastor Pojo, I did something interesting. I'm an analytical mind. I work in the world of finance. So in my world, if you want to prove something, you put it in a spreadsheet. And if it's in a spreadsheet, you can put it on a graph. And if it's on a graph, it must be true. <laughs> Nobody debates a graph. So in preparation for this, I arced my mind back, and I looked at 10 of Africa's largest economies, between the years 1956 and 1968. And I looked at what it was that made up those economies. I looked in that particular period because that was the transitory period in our continent. What I wanted to seek and find was to answer a simple question. What does it take for Africans to be great? It's a simple question. Now, because of the nature of my work, I went and looked for the actual thing that I could prove here, the scientific thing that I could go, statistically, if you do these things on a balance of probabilities, you will achieve whatever greatness is defined as for you. And here is what I found. I found that in every instance where there was a particular set of factors that made a population group or a citizenry or a nation achieve its goals, if you took those very same factors and plugged them into a different citizenry, the numbers would not tally. That is to say the following, that beyond strategy, beyond information, beyond policy, formations and conversations, all of which, by the way, are fundamental. There is a single truism that holds, an ingredient without which the coffee doesn't taste good, and the ingredient is this, choice. Do the people of those countries choose to be great? You know this is true, by the way, because there are a lot of choices we make as people that filter into just how we think about ourselves. When you say or hear people say things like, this is just how we do things in Nigeria. That kind of statement is often diminutive. It reduces us to the basic bare minimum and says accept this because this is the standard. In other words, even though we could choose better, we choose what we just get. That greatness is truly a choice. I often hear young people today, last night I was invited by a friend of mine who is from Ghana and he's in South Africa as well, so we went out for some dinner, spent some time with some young people. And I often hear young people today say things like this, you know, it's time for young people to rise. It's time for the old people to move out of the way. It's time, it's time, it's time. Let me tell you, young people, there is no old person going anywhere. If you want that seat in that office, in that boardroom, in that chamber, in that ministry, you're going to have to fight for it because power isn't given, it's taken. 
And so the question as our continent rises is, will we be men and women of courage? Will we be the generation in 50 years' time that our children reference and say, they, they did it right? They had the template for how to truly pull out of each other the ability to work with each other. And something fascinating is happening today. I must tell you this, this is the good news. The good news is that we're no longer separated. The good news is that we find each other. The good news is that in this room, there are people who are following Vusi Tembegwayo on Instagram. I, I know I'm very good looking on Instagram, I must, tell you. I must tell you, I am very good looking on Instagram. But the good news is that even I have the privilege of following a Professor Lumumba's work. No matter where in the world I find myself, where there are Africans who are speaking, leading, evangelizing, and growing others, we now have the ability to find each other. The true question is, will we have the ability to build with each other? Now, from that video, I have a few points that I've really picked from what Vushi Thambekwayo is kind of talking about there. Because one thing that is very evident is that the question of borders within Africa has really brought a lot of challenges to Africans. Just as he explains, the main intention of this division and the main intention of partitioning Africa was to ensure that divisions were created such that Africa could not work as a unit together. Because you remember that when we work together, Africa can really be great. But because of the sheer number of resources that we have in Africa and the manner in which our unity can create fast development, the European countries did not want this to really come to fruition in our continent. And therefore, they said that let us divide them in different countries so that we have an easier way through which we can control them. Now, you know these divisions that were created and the manner in which we were partitioned, Africa has really seen a lot of challenges. And the development of Africa has been delayed by the fact that we have not been joined as a unit. And this is what people like Kwame Nkrumah said, because they understood that Africa in itself was a whole plate that is a continent that did not have borders within itself. And people lived freely with different political structures and beliefs. But when the white person came, they decided to really have us in different partitions according to what they thought was right to them. Now, what has these borders brought to us? One of the main challenges and the reason why you find that even with the resources that all our countries have, development still stagnates, is the continuous inter-ethnic conflicts that have really happened in different countries. Right now in DRC Congo, the eastern side, North Kivu, we are experiencing continuous conflicts. That area is rich in some mineral resources. So this continuous fight gives the white person enough opportunity to come and pose as security agents, pose as peacekeeping missions, and then they steal from our own resources. So these inter-ethnic clashes that have been created within our societies is responsible for the delayed growth. Remember the Biafra war that happened in Nigeria. The partitioning also led to the fall of our indigenous political institutions. You know, some people think that the white man is the one who brought for us the governance structure that is here. But they came and changed our governance structure. And therefore, Africa is very, very challenged in terms of having African institutions work for themselves. They came and even told us that our religion, indigenous religion, was satanic, and therefore we were supposed to change our ways into new ways. This should not be the case, because as it is, religion was being practiced in Africa. There are certain things we were doing. So as people continue to talk about this issue, I am of the belief that there is need for us to find a way through which the question of having visas to really visit different countries is eliminated. Let Africa trade with itself. Let somebody in South Africa get equal opportunity to move without any restrictions from South Africa to Morocco, from South Africa to Senegal, from South Africa to Egypt, from South Africa to Libya, from South Africa to Somalia. And let a Somali also come from Somalia and move direct to Niger, move to Burkina Faso, move to Namibia moved to Mozambique without any restrictions. This is something that has been emulated and it is working in European Union. Remember, if you are in Italy, you can easily go to Spain. You can go to England. 
and without any visa restrictions because once you hold a visa from one of the EU member states, you have the free movement that you can go to any other EU member countries. Why can't Africa have that? Because we have the African Union and African Union can work towards ensuring that we have a passport that works for every African that you can move from every country and go anywhere without any restrictions. But do you know why this thing cannot work? The Western purpose that we have as our leaders in Africa continue to perpetuate the divisions because of the little goodies that they get from their masters. It is very, very serious that Africa gets to realize its potential. I don't know what you think about this topic, but for me, I think Vushi Tambekwayo has really spoken everything that I would have wanted to speak about. And let that speech inspire you into championing for new Africa. Because just as he has said, let the youth not wait to be given power. Let the youth not wait to be taught how to bring change. But let them be inspired internally to really grow and bring change that Africa needs. Because the Africa we want tomorrow, we start creating it today. Thank you and let's meet in our next video. Goodbye.